Hey guys, welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border. I'm Jacob Harrison, your host, and today we're going to be talking about my trip from Mexico City to New Orleans, and then from New Orleans back to Australia. And that's when shit kind of got bad when I got back to this beautiful country. Where all that terrible shit that's happened in my life has happened. <laughs> I left Mexico City, got to New Orleans. New Orleans, my God, it's so beautiful. You know, about a half an hour drive from the airport, got to the hostel. It used to be like an asylum. This this hostel that we're staying at, an asylum, like like a, a veterans home during um, the Civil War. It'd been like everything. It was like the creepiest one of this place in the world with some amazing characters that just kind of live there as well. Man, it was cool. Wow, what a beautiful city on Halloween. Went out during the day, went and did the cemetery there. Went to a lot of the bars in the gay district, in Bourbon Street, of course. Man, it's just a beautiful place. I went into Dr. John's voodoo shop and bought myself a mojo bag, which I just realized last night, a good year and a bit later, that I haven't even been using it correctly. I wonder all this terrible shit's happened to me. Ah, oh, an idiot. Um, so that was cool, Halloween night, just partied and carried on. Um, but I couldn't carry on too much. Well, you see, it was time for the holiday to come to an end. Yes, sadly, all things must. From New Orleans to LA, and from LA back to Sydney, it was not the same feeling at all. It was dread I was coming back to and leaving and missing my beautiful boyfriend, my future husband, as we used to say. <laughs> that was lovely at the time. So my mum and dad were there to see me at the airport. It was great, exchanged presents and did all that. It was very lovely, lovely, lovely. A few days later, caught up with everyone, told them about my beautiful man. Everyone was so happy for me and everything was lovely. And then I had work starting like on Monday the next week. This is Friday, I, I arrive. Monday I go back to work after this whole thing. Didn't decompress, wasn't even sleeping right. Not good for someone with bipolar. Really not. I, it was only a temp job, but I couldn't keep it. It was like ridiculous. I was falling asleep at work. I was, yeah, it was just nice. So I was like, no, I'm just gonna rest for the rest of the year. Unfortunately, so this is the beginning of November, 2016, and that's when things start to go very bad. For me, I didn't get back on my medication because I was like, I'd used medication in the past when I was with Valdemar to numb everything. And I did not want to numb the love I felt. But I did want to not be acting crazy, drinking way too much, again, for no reason, because I missed him, because it was a Saturday, because it was anything. Um, and then a friend of mine passed away, and that made things worse, and I don't know, it was a, just a kind of constant up and down and up and down of and Bernardo couldn't understand what was going on. And, you know, when I'm in that way, like, I can't even communicate. I'm too anxious, I'm too drunk, I'm too, um, whatever. I'm just fucked, I'm frightened. Sleeping with a knife next to my bed. Oh my God, the anxiety was terrible. I kind of almost wanted to break up with, with Bernardo just because I didn't want to put him through it. And I, I was getting anxious because I couldn't get onto him and everything else. And we live in two different countries with two different, very, very different mobile phone etiquettes. You message someone, you message them right back. But you know, he didn't know me as a mobile phone guy because I'd lost it in my first night. Maybe I should lose it more often. Yeah, things were kind of up and down for me and for me and Bernardo because he couldn't understand what was going on. Why was I drinking like that? And this was scary for him because he had issues with men in the past who had drank and that scared him and that scared me. I ventured out for help. I got hypnosis, I started seeing a counsellor, but by this stage it was kind of getting towards the too late. Christmas came around, I was really hungover. Managed to call Bernardo and his family um, through Skype, and that was lovely. Couldn't really do much with my family because I was so hungover. New Year's Eve, oh my god, it was such a fun night. Like, it was at my cousin's place overlooking Sydney Harbour. Wow, so beautiful. Like, and I was like, wow, 2017 is going to be my year. It's going to be hard work, but me and Bernardo are going to do it. 
and all the fireworks went off. And it was just like, yes, this is, this is it, this is it. I've made it, I've made it. Finally, this is where I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to be. So I was okay, everything was fine. I was good, I was good, I was good. And then I got this job, telemarketing. It was not so fun, it was very stressful. I was selling printers at an office place. Not good for me, not good. Um, I wasn't sleeping, yeah, I was not okay. And Bernardo was trying to talk to me, probably from the beginning of 2017. I was off the planet. I wasn't making sense in my own mind. I should have been in hospital. Between drinking and anxiety and depression and just wanting to hurt myself and not feel anything. Which is insane because I was so fucking in love. Got to Australia Day and I had the day off because that's what we do. We go and get drunk and do Australian-y things. I got drunk. And Bernardo wanted a break. And I got very, very drunk after that, after he said that. Um, I was scared of what that meant. I didn't think we would ever get to that point. And I wanted to die because I couldn't see my life without him. After my flatmates kind of realized how bad I was, got an ambulance called, ended up at a hospital. I was scheduled, which means you can't leave. You legally have to stay at the hospital or they'll send the police out for you. Um, I was on a lot of medication. I had a fall while I was at hospital. Uh, I fell out of the bed on, in the emergency and onto one of those machines and just face planted. I had the two giant black eyes, couldn't open up one eye for a whole week. It was disgusting, it was horrible. But a few days later, after I managed to compose this story of our relationship, me and Bernardo, what we can to look forward to in the future, and I was honest about what I need from him and that we can have honest communication now. But it was too late. It was way too late. Um, I should have told him that I needed help. I should have told him that, uh, you know, I have issues too. But I'm going to work through them with him. But no, he left me. He said, I love you, but I can't be with you. That's what, I can't really remember even very much of the actual call, the breakup call because I was that medicated. It was uh, the worst pain I've ever felt. Many episodes ago I said, I don't know what's worse, trauma of physical pain, of accidents, of people treating you terribly, or the pain of going through something so wonderful and having it end. When Bernardo broke up with me, I lost a future that I'd written in my head. I'd lost soulmate so I thought I lost um, myself in a way or who I thought I'd become I actually thought I died I was successful in my suicide attempt and had gone to hell that's how bad I felt and I thought it was all my fault and it really I mean it was and it wasn't someone who says that they're going to be with you forever to just kind of like turn around and dump you when you're literally in a hospital bed. I'm worth more than that. It took me a long time to realize that again, but I'm worth a lot more than that. So that was how we ended what was going to be the love affair of the century. But it was time to move on to whatever the next stage was, which ended up being a psychiatric hospital for the next six weeks. More on that in our next episode. I hope you liked how gritty and raw this was, because I fucking did. Hope you liked it. Uh, tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't in the comments below. Please subscribe, it would mean the world to me. Um, check us out on Facebook at uh, Down Under and South of the Border. And check me out at Cobjack at Instagram for all the saucier things in life. And not so saucy, there's some content there. There's, there's you know, you know. It's Playboy, but you know, there's some good articles at times. Okay, thanks guys. Love you all. Mwah. Adios amigos.